Hi there. Yesterday we, we read um, chapter 9 and we saw Joe still wasn't feeling good and he was with his nurse Amir who at first I thought like is he seeing aliens again but actually I think he was just hanging up um, Joe's new satellite for his TV. So today we'll be reading chapter 10 and 11 because 10 is really really short today. Chapter 10. 11 years, 2 months, and 28 days. This afternoon, I think a bird flew into my window. I heard the thud, but when I opened my eyes, it was gone. A bird can fly at 60 miles per hour. A falcon can fly at 100 miles per hour. A bullet flies 761 miles per hour. Nobody knows how fast Superman can fly, but it's faster than that. Everything goes black again. Chapter 11. 11 years, 2 months, and 28 days. The ceiling lights are dimmed. Music is playing, a piano with a lady singing so quietly that I can't hear what song it is. I breathe, but it's hard because my chest aches like someone is sitting on it. The monitors flash and beep. The bag of blood has gone. Now there's another bag of saline that drips through the tube into my arm. That's water mixed with salt. They give it to me to rehydrate my cells. It's supposed to stop me from feeling giddy, but from the sick feeling my stomach. It doesn't seem to be working yet. I feel a warm hand on top of mine. I turn my head. Beth smiles at me. Hey, there you are, she whispers. You've been fighting a war. Yeah, there's a lump in my throat. Beth bites down on her lip. Her eyes are red and dark around the edges. There's a smudge of black on her cheek. Sometimes when I'm ill, it looks like she's hurting as much as I am. She squeezes my hand tighter, and I don't want her to let go. I try to speak again. Beth pours me a cup of water and holds it to my lips. My throat is so sore it's like I'm swallowing glass. I take a deep breath and try again. It's easier this time. Beth puts the cup up on the table beside me. So, who are you? Spider-Man or Superman? I don't know, but I thought both of them were going to beat me up. Beth smiles. She's not supposed to be here this week, but I'm glad she is. She rubs my hand again. I swallow hard, but it doesn't stop the tears from falling out of my eyes. I'm sorry, I say. I couldn't help it. Sorry you had to come. Joe, it's okay. I had to see you. She looks down at my bed and back at me. But why didn't you tell the nurses you weren't feeling well? I just wanted to be on TV again. Tears fall down the side of my face and onto the pillow. Hey, she says. It's okay. Beth holds me tight until my body stops shaking. Sorry. If you say you're sorry one more time, I'm going to get up and leave. We both laugh. Neither of us believe what she says. I tell her I'm tired, but I don't want to go to sleep because she's here and she'll have to go soon. She tells me that's where I'm wrong because her university has said she can stay for the whole weekend. I lie back and try to relax. I want to tell her I hear Graham say in the transition zone about kids dying, but I don't want her to worry. I can't tell her that I think that they're talking about me. I turn my head and look at her. She smiles and rubs my hand. She's always here when I need her. Beth rubs my arm again. Sometimes it's like she knows what I'm thinking. I try to speak, but my lips are cracked and my mouth is dry. She smiles at me. Hey, just go to sleep, she says. We'll catch up tomorrow. I close my eyes and drift to sleep. My legs are twitching like snakes under my sheets. Greg's walking around the room. He has to. He has back from vacation, but I'm happy to see him. He checks the monitors, checks my chart, then looks at me. You should sleep, mate, he says. You know that's what makes it better. But I can't stop them. I sit up and clamp my hands on my knees. I need to sleep to stop my legs twitching, but it's because my legs are twitching that I can't sleep. Greg puts the chart down and walks over to me. Don't worry about it, mate. At least it's a sign you're coming back to life. I press my knees back down into my bed again, but it's worse than I've ever had it before. I'm not surprised it's bad. You've been out for hours. He glances at my monitor. Your temperature is 39 degrees Celsius. It's still high, but it's moving the right way. Let's try and walk the ache off. I get up and see the empty chair by my bed. When did Beth leave? Greg looks at his watch. About two hours ago. She's sleeping upstairs in one of the guest rooms. I told her she'd be more help to you if she got some sleep. So are you ready to try to walk, mate? I nod. Greg helps me sit up. I slide my feet over the bed and onto the floor. Blood rushes from my head and the lights turn fuzzy. After a minute or two, my head begins to clear. I nod to Greg and put one of his hands on my wrist and the other on my elbow. I take a deep breath and stand up. We walk to the end of the bed and stop. Greg looks at the wall. So, where did these come from? The TVs hung across the wall like black holes. I thought I thought I was dreaming. Amir? I scratch my head. I remember something. A man floating outside the window? Why does Amir think you need 12 TVs? I shrug and look at the screens. Amir only said he was getting me Sky. He didn't say anything about getting me more than one TV. I don't know why he's done that. It doesn't matter how many screens we have. We'd only be able to watch one program at a time. Greg pulls me up. We'll have to call and ask him. Come on, mate. Let's get those legs sorted. 
We would walk up and down the room three times, and he tells me what he did on his days off. He went bowling with his friends and went to the cinema with Katie. They saw The Maze Runner. I'd like to see that, I say, but I'll have to wait for the DVD. Greg looks over his shoulder at the screens. Maybe that's what Amir's trying to do, build you a cinema. Now all you need is popcorn and Coke. That would be great, I say. I just need to tell him how to turn them on. Tell me how to turn them on. Well, that would help. Come on then, mate. Let's keep going. Me and Greg walk to the window and back to the door. On the fourth turn, we stop and take a rest and look out. The planes are flying between buildings. Down the streets, the road work have reached the phone shop. We watch the lights change and the traffic moves on. Amir says they're building a magnetic field for aliens to land. Greg smiles. Mate, you shouldn't believe everything Amir says. He might just be playing. No, I don't think he is. I think he really believes it. Greg nods in, down at the traffic. Well, if they do land here, I hope someone tells them to get out of the way. He puts his hand under my arm again. Come on, he says. Let's keep moving. Another half hour and the primi primipexel will kick in. You should be able to settle down then. I rest my head against the glass. Hey, mate, I said. You'll be okay. I'm just tired. If you're sure... I roll my head from side to side and feel the cold glass on my forehead. I close my eyes. What if Graham and the new cameraman David were talking about me dying? I look at Greg. Tell me about the others. What now? It's late, mate. Tell me. They're fine, mate. The boy with the billet ball head? Greg smiles. Yes, he's good. Is he still running around? It was the last time I saw him. What about the girl who chases him pretending she's a horse? What about her? Is she okay? Yes, mate. She's fine. And the boy who reads The Hunger Games? Yes. He's still... Mate, what's this about? I turn away from the window. Is he okay? Yes, mate. He's okay. Now tell me what's up. I shrug. Something I heard Graham say. What? He said he couldn't stop filming just because people die. Greg puts one hand around the back of my neck. Mate, you're okay. Everyone else is okay. And anyway, Graham might not have been talking about anyone this particular. It's a hospital. Unfortunately, unfortunately people die all the time. He glances at the time and we walk back to the bed. The light is flashing on my laptop. I stop. Henry. His walk. I've been so ill for so long I'd forgotten about him. I flip the lid. Greg nods at my bed. Mate, not now. It's going to be time to get up before you even get to sleep. But it's Henry. He did a second walk today. Greg sighs. Okay, just one message. Let's not push it. I sit on my bed. Greg hands me the laptop. Joe? Joe? Guess you're busy. Been out again. It wasn't great. More asphalt and green fences. Couldn't see anything. But they're thinking of letting me go out earlier. BTW, the new assistant from NASA, is nice. Arianne, she's French. Um, not sure where you are. Maybe Beth's with you. Hope so. Tell her I say hi. Need to sleep. Try you again later. I start typing. Hey, Henry, sorry your walk was boring. Great you might not have been... Great you might have gotten to go out earlier. Sorry I haven't replied. Had a crash. I press enter. Mate, Greg reached the laptop. I said one message. I know, but you didn't say how long. Greg shakes his head. Anywhere, guess what Amir did. He got me 12 TVs. Finished. He closes the lid down. I rest my head back on my pillow. Greg closes the blinds and dims the lights until all I can see is the shadows again. I take a deep breath and then another. I can relax now. Greg is back and Beth is here. I get to see her again tomorrow. And soon Amir will be back to switch the TVs on. I close my eyes and listen to the machines beep. The beep is good. They mean I've made it. And that's the end of the chapter. So I'm glad that we got to see Joe and that he's feeling better and he's feeling more stable um, and that Greg is back. So I think that's a really great spot to leave that chapter. Hope you enjoyed.